proximal humerus fracture, open reduction and internal fixation. Not as easy as it looks. Proximal humerus fractures are common, particularly in the elderly. Although non-operative treatment is appropriate in many cases, open reduction internal fixation is a mainstay in the treatment algorithm. Through careful understanding of fracture geometry, deforming forces, and construct mechanics, good results can be achieved. Indications 1. 2. 3. And four-part fractures displaced greater than one centimeter or angulated more than 45 degrees in the physiologically young. 2. Greater tuberosity fractures displaced greater than 5 millimeters above the humeral head. 3. Fracture dislocations or irreducible fractures in the physiologically young patient. 4. Unstable fractures that would preclude early motion. 5. Open fractures. 6. Associated vascular injury. Preoperative preparation. 1. Obtain adequate radiographs. A. Anteroposterior, AP, shoulder, AP scapula, grachy, axillary, and scapula Y view. B. Consider obtaining a computed tomography CT, scan to define articular involvement and bone stock core to assess glenior humeral reduction and tuberosity displacement. C. Consider obtaining a magnetic resonance imaging MRI, scan if there is a clinical concern about the integrity of the rotator cuff. 2. Detailed neurovascular examination. 3. Discussion with the patient about the risk of failure, potential complications, and the need for revision to arthroplasty, especially with the physiologically older patient. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. One dot radiolucent table and arm rest. Two, anatomically contoured proximal humerus plates, small fragment implants trauma and bone forceps sets, and or allograft fibula strut, bone graft, or bone graft substitute. 3. Heavy non-absorbable suture for tuberosity reattachment. 4. Position semi-sitting or supine with a bump under the operative scapula. A. Supine position allows for easy fluoroscopic imaging including a true axillary lateral and ease of positioning, especially in polytrauma. B. Semi-sitting position is familiar to many shoulder surgeons and can allow for conversion to arthroplasty. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. 5. See arm positioned next the patient's head. A. Check adequacy of fluoroscopic imaging prior to prep and drape. 6. General anesthetic preferred may supplement with a regional scalene block. A. Request endotracheal tube be taped on contralateral side of mouth. Tips and pearls. 1. Drape the entire shoulder girdle and arm free. 2. Avoid releasing the coracoacromial ligament if there is a high risk of failure or potential for conversion to arthroplasty options in the future. 3. Place traction sutures through the rotator cuff insertions to aid reduction and fixation of the tuberosities and feed these through the eyelets of the plate prior to fixation. 4. Tuberosity reduction in a key predictor of functional outcomes. 5. Re-establishing and supporting the medial calcar is crucial to avoid failure of fixation and varus collapse. 6. Abduction of the shoulder will relax the deltoid muscle and aid in reduction of the fracture. 7. Consider tenodesis of an injured biceps tendon to eliminate a source of postoperative pain. What to avoid? 1. 
excessive stripping and devascularization of the fracture fragments. 2. Excessive dissection within the bicipital groove to preserve the ascending branch of the anterior humeral circumflex artery supplying the humeral head. C. Figure 3. Varus alignment, or failure to restore medial column support. 4. Intra-articular screw penetration. Figure details. A. Vascular supply of the anterior humeral head, anterior view. 3. Anterior humeral circumflex artery, 4. Anterolateral branch of the anterior humeral circumflex artery, arcuate artery, 5. Greater tuberosity, 6. Lesser tuberosity, 7. Insertion of the subscapularis, 8. Site of terminal entry of the arcuate artery into the bone, 9. Bicipital groove. B. Vascular supply of the posterior humeral head, posterior view. PCA, posterior circumflex artery. Postoperative care issues. 1. Verify the patient's neurovascular exam the same day as surgery. 2. Immobilize the shoulder in a sling. 3. Early motion is employed based on fixation stability as determined intraoperatively. Operative technique. 1. Standard incision through the deltopectoral interval. Figure. A. Additional exposure can be attained by releasing the anterior third of the pectoralis major and deltoid tendon insertions, which should be repaired prior to closure. 2. Alternatively, an anterolateral deltoid splitting approach can be used when conversion to arthroplasty is not anticipated. A. Identify the axillary nerve and protect it approximately 6.5 cm from the acromion. 3. Identify the long head of biceps tendon to outline the fracture pattern and guide reduction. Reduction and fixation. 4. Mobilize fracture fragments using heavy sutures or K wires, taking care to preserve vascularity. 5. Place heavy non-absorbable traction sutures in the rotator cuff insertions. 6. Maintain soft tissue attachments as much as possible, working through fracture fragments, however, if required, one may release the rotator cuff interval to mobilize the tuberosities, see figure. 7. Inspect the humeral head to address any impaction, splitting, or malposition. Reduction and fixation. 8. Disimpact and reduce the humeral head from the shaft using blunt elevators or chance pins. 9. Reduce the tuberosities to the head and provisionally hold the reduction using 0.062 inch K wires, see figure. 10. Place a precontoured proximal humerus locking plate in the appropriate position. A. Most plates are designed to sit just lateral to bicipital groove. B. Thread the rotator cuff sutures through the eyelets of the plate. Reduction and fixation. 11. Fix the plate to the shaft with a cortical screw in the distal oblong hole, see figure. A. Use fluoroscopy to adjust height and assess reduction. B. A plate that is too proximal will cause postoperative impingement against the acromion. 12. Ensure that the medial calcar has been restored. A. An allograft fibula strut can be used to supplement deficient metaphysial bone and provide control and support between the shaft and head. Reduction and fixation. 13. Fill proximal holes with divergent locking screws with subchondral bone purchase, see figure. A. Drilling through the articular surface. 14. Place an inferior medial calcar screw to support to a disrupted medial column. 15. 
Verify screw depth and containment within the humeral head under fluoroscopy. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.